Hello. Um, so this session is about asking any questions you want to uh, the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, we had a few ideas for questions to open it up if you don't have any questions, especially what the hell is uh, open infrastructure, because it's a popular topic. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to like, ask the first question, um, if that's a good way to kick it off. Do we have a Lauren cell? She'll make it, I'm sure. So you well, may know Jonathan Bryce here. He is the head honcho at the OpenStack Foundation. And Mr. Collier is our uh, uh, resident joke uh, maker. <laughs> so CEO, and I'm in charge of uh, keeping the cats together. Um, and Lauren Sell does the real work, which is why she's not here. That's so true. <laughs> All those things are true. So uh, there are some mics in the middle here and on the sides. Um, and uh, you know, don't be shy. If you have questions, this is the time. Ask them about anything. So I have a question. What okay. is open infrastructure, Jonathan? Um, did, you, uh, did you miss my keynote yesterday? <laughs> I, I may have missed the keynote. I was backstage, and the sound was not so great. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a good question. And I think it's, it's something that we've been talking about uh, obviously a lot this week already, but um, to me, and we can hear if, if you have different opinions, but to me, open infrastructure is, uh, is, is really about building out open alternatives to manage all of the different forms that compute storage and networking um, are, are taking now and are, are going to be taking into the future. And, uh, and then making sure that those are uh, production ready, able to run at scale with the proper security um, so that you know, businesses can, can rely on them for real workloads. And, uh, and you know, I, I think that, uh, that uh, OpenStack has always been um, infrastructure from the very beginning. It started as open source infrastructure as a service software. Um, but the, the, the concept of, of what infrastructure was back in 2010 was, was pretty much just virtual machines automated and uh, you know, maybe some, some different kinds of storage. And, uh, and, and that was kind of what cloud overall was limited to. But what we've seen in the last eight years is that, uh, that um, new applications higher up the stack have driven a lot of new demands on the underlying infrastructure. Um, things like AI, like Mark demo today, where you might need GPUs or FPGAs, um, or, uh, or things like, uh, like running a ton of locations distributed out into the world. Uh, that, uh, that can't be accessed by a human very easily, or things like massively multi-tenant environments where you need uh, better and better isolation and security in lighter weight ways. So I think to me, you know, it's, it's really about solving those low-level problems so that uh, the upper levels can continue to innovate and, uh, and, and you know, rely on some really solid access to automated compute storage and networking. Speaking of the demo, Tim Bell just arrived, so I believe he speaks German now. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, um, yeah, I yeah. think another, think another important part to me is uh, the interoperability part, because I feel like it's very important that whatever we build internally or externally to solve those infrastructure problems so that, that, they, that you can actually like, address them with common APIs, and that means um, truly hybrid model where whatever you deploy locally is also compatible with uh, what you may use externally. And to me, open infrastructure is also about this interoperability and it gets more important as you distribute this compute power uh, closer to the edge because standards and interoperability will be key to the success of that technology. I think open source has a great role to play there and I think open infrastructure is that layer that will be built on open source uh, projects that is interoperable and that you can build your applications on top of. Lauren, what do you think open infrastructure is? <laughs> okay. I've never had a, a panel table this formal. I feel like I'm at no, a these, meeting these, or something up here. These monitors are uh, distracting. Um, 
Well, I think when we have been, I'll take a little bit of a different view from like the technology view, but um, as we've been thinking through it over the last year, and I think we talked about this a little bit in Vancouver, but um, when we obviously like kicked off the foundation and, and started to build this community, everything was very much from the perspective of OpenStack, the project and the software and the community, which was extremely important and, you know, a pretty like broad project um, that was growing and took our focus. But I think over time, organically, we realized that the people that were, you know, coming and collaborating at our events or online, they were, you know, working with technologies or doing things that were much broader than OpenStack. And we were kind of looking at it from the wrong point of view of the point of view of just through the software project or the point of view through the contributors and the people who were running the software. And they were thinking OpenStack was really important, but it was one piece of it. And they weren't just coming for, you know, the software, the technology. They were coming to, you know, learn how to run these things together. So to me, when we're thinking about, you know, open infrastructure and moving this direction, it's also just about the the perspective of not just one software project, but kind of more holistically solving this problem together. So. We have the full spectrum now. <laughs> um, I think there might be some people yes. getting asked questions. questions that's, that's what we want, so please. Perfect. I, I have a question. Yesterday, in this, in this very same room, there was a panel of the industry analysts. And uh, I actually challenged them and asked them a question. Uh, why the open infrastructure shouldn't matter to user. The reason was that they gave their view and they said the growth of the open infrastructure ecosystem is, you know, barely half of what Amazon annual growth is. You know, the users are looking at the analyst reports in terms of where should they invest their money, and vendors are looking at the analyst reports in terms of where should they spend their research dollars. And uh, in my opinion, the analyst gave a pretty poor answer. And so my, my question to the foundation is, uh, what should foundation do to really, uh, you know, work with the industry and the analysts and, you know, get the message out that, you know, infrastructure matters and users should be spending the dollars and companies should be investing uh, in open infrastructure rather than, you know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, VMware, and so on. Thanks. Well, um, can you give me names for those analysts? <laughs> I think, well, that's recorded. Okay, I just yeah, saw I an know. analyst watch. Sure, they're on I'm the schedule. Got to point them out. Uh, now, so yeah, I think that's a. Uh, it is a really interesting question. Um, you know, if you look at, at some of the the uh, the the analysts out there, they've definitely had. Um, there's a variety of opinions uh, across all of the analysts that we talk to and and work with. Um, and I think that the, one of the things that, uh, that I've thought for, you know, a, a while now is that, that it's, it's hard to, uh, to, um, to kind of measure the impact of open source in, the, in ways that it's a lot easier to measure the impact of, of proprietary systems. Um, you know, when you look at, at kind of analyst reports on sizes of the OpenStack market, they range between estimates of, of you know several billion to six billion to I've seen up to eight billion dollars, and so there's there's you know like a wide range of it, but those are are looking at kind of the the level of of revenue that's coming in around an open source project, uh, which is just one piece of kind of like what the overall pie for for the open infrastructure market really would would look like. Um, it, when you look at something like, like uh, you, you mentioned, um, you know, Amazon and, and public clouds, Amazon's revenue includes a, an end-to-end -end solution that is hardware, networking, data center space, operations, all of that kind of, kind of thing. And, and so it becomes really difficult to, to compare those things. Um, for, for the, uh, uh, in terms of what we can do as a foundation, one of the, the things that we are always trying to um, to, to highlight and, and to get data out there about is around um, us, user adoption and uh, and kind of the different uh, uh, the different types of workloads and use cases that that it's driven into um, because ultimately you know that that's uh, that's how any of the technologies that we see in the market succeed or fail it, it's about um, it's about adoption and uh, and so you know that's that's one of the things that we that we always try to do so. Um, if you're interested in, in helping with that, 
any users you know, make sure they come to the user survey, make sure that, that they're in contact with us because then that gives us better data to share with the analysts that sh helps, helps us show how widely adopted it is, how many market it's, markets it's going to, what kind of, like the broad set of use cases it's, it's, uh, it's, it's being used for. Um, on the, uh, you asked about kind of the, the commercial side, and I think that, uh, that you know, that's another, another question that, that we get sometimes is uh, from, from some of the, the companies in, in, in the ecosystem is, uh, you know, similar kind of uh, research and, and questions. And, uh, and you know, the, the answer again for us is, is really comes down to, um, to adoption for, uh, in, in terms of ultimately what's gonna drive product sales for them. But I think that, that one of the things that, that, uh, that is also really relevant is the innovation that uh, that you're able to take advantage of um, when you when you basically are, are partnering with an entire collaborative ecosystem of people who are developing it together. Um, we actually had had a meeting, Mark and I, just uh, like an hour or so ago with with uh, with. Um, some customers of, of one of the, the vendors in, in the ecosystem and, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, general manager from, from the vendor there was talking and kind of introducing us and he said, without open source, um, you don't have innovation. And I think that that's, that's a, a, a mindset that, that uh, uh, you know, is, is pretty advanced. Not everyone feels that way right now, but I think that that's the direction that the world is heading. Um, and, and over time, we're probably going to, to, uh, to overall, you know, have to develop some different ways of measuring how these, how these different approaches stack up, because it is really difficult to, to look at it from a, from a purely um, kind of dollars, but sometimes that's sort of like the easiest number to get. But I think, yeah, if, if you are, are interested in, in how to help us, the biggest thing is users. users and, uh, and, um, and, and that's like the, I think the, uh, the data that we, that we uh, really have to build and, and flesh out to share. So I think, are you gonna, someone else can, yeah. All right, I mean, this is a question that sort of like came up before in different forums and we talked a little bit uh, during the round table about it. Uh, basically the concept of mission creep, the fact that, okay, you more or less got rid of the big tent concept, now you're launching top-level projects. And Jonathan, you said, oh, it's just four projects a year. But four projects a year, five years, that's 20 projects, 20 top-level projects, and that's not thinking about all the development that's going on within OpenStack itself. Um, so do you think like, they raise a real danger that this, this whole structure you've built will become too difficult to operate? And uh, would you consider kind of spinning off some of the projects, uh, potentially, uh, under the Linux Foundation? Because that seems to be like the hot thing right now. And you know, like they're launching new communities left and right, so. Um, I think it's important to realize that it's not a zero-sum game in the OpenStack community. We don't have like a finite number of developers that we allocate to one project or another. Every time we open up a new use case, a new strategic focus area, or a new project, it comes with new people that join our community or operators that were using OpenStack software before that um, we're exploring new ways of deploying it and integrating it with other software or are we're using something internally that they think is useful for everyone. So in the end, it, it, it wasn't even the case in the case of OpenStack when we added a new sub-project in OpenStack we wouldn't take away resources from a given project to allocate them, um, but it's even more uh, true for uh, for those new projects which come with, which come with their own community, their own uh, their own ways of doing things. The important for us is that they are openly collaborating, that they are helping with open infrastructure. And when we say uh, we won't add uh, that many projects, I'm, I'm not even sure we would add four projects per year. It's like I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would say you know you said would we get to the point where it makes sense for them to be independent? And to a certain extent, they are independent. You know, they have their in individual communities with independent technical governance. So there's not, you know, the structure is maybe not as uh, structural as CityCube. <laughs> I wouldn't consider it as like, you know, um, concrete and steel. It's, it's really a, a collaboration model in a, in a uh, you know, as a foundation, a set of services and kind of support that we provide to these communities. Um, to help them help them grow, but they're they're very much kind of thriving and growing on their own as independent projects. 
Um, they're just, they have certain things in common, and that's, that's, the, that's the important thing. You know, they're, they're going to be used together in, in common use cases, but they're, they're, they're independent in many ways kind of from, from the beginning. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that a little bit along the same lines, but I don't see the four projects as operating in silos, and it's been really cool to see a lot of um, the collaboration across those teams this week. Like, I've seen different... Twitter threads happening where the Airship team is working with the Zool team, and this morning Airship was talking about how their next step is to add support for Ironic. Um, so I, I definitely don't see these projects operating, you know, they, they're all benefiting each other. Um, and I think that's a really important point, is that we're thinking about this all for the same kind of, um, you know, for our community, which are people that run or, you know, or, or care about the infrastructure layer. So they're, all of the projects are are related and benefit each other. And I mean, like if you look at Kata, yes, it plugs into OpenStack Zoom. I think in the board meeting, I heard some updates about like Storlets and a couple other projects within OpenStack that are, that are doing some Kata things. But also just working with the Kata community has given us a chance to build stronger relationships with the Kubernetes community. And that kind of diplomacy also has a positive effect for OpenStack. So there's all this kind of network effect between these four, or between the projects that we have, and I think that any project we would add in the future would be in that same sphere. Yeah, it turns out when you put engineers in the same room and they discuss technical problems, the boundaries between projects or foundations or anything else doesn't really matter. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. And so uh, I see None of those people are going, well, which foundation is this project in? That's not what they it's, care it, about. They're like, what does the code do and what problem does it solve and can I make, put it together with what I'm doing and solve a bigger problem? Like That's actually what, what matters. And I, I see our role uh, being in opening doors and making sure those connections happen. Uh, and that's where, where I'm, I'm very happy with, with the new strategy that we put in place because we're more open. We moved from wanting to do everything within our community, within OpenStack, to uh, take more of a, a use case, a problem that people have, and help them solve that, be it with projects that we host, integrating projects that we don't host, uh, like taking the problem and trying to solve a problem space rather than just produce a piece of software. I think it's, it's, it's way more, a way more positive approach to look into it, and I'm very happy with the connections I have with those other adjacent communities. I think we have, at the technical level, really good relationships, so I'm, I'm very happy that it's working. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, this segue is nice into Guilty. I'm one of the co-organizers of the Manchester OpenStack Meetup and was one of the co-organizers of OpenStack Days UK 2017. Thank you. So both myself and Danny are looking to open Infra Days 2019. And really we're looking for a bit of guidance from the foundation as to how far we can stretch the open infra remit within yeah. the idea that you just described, which is reaching out to adjacent communities. You know, we'd like to you know, get other speakers involved that aren't necessarily directly involved in OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Like how far can we push that before it's you're uncomfortable with it being branded. <laughs> yeah. I realize it's a slightly awkward question, but... No, no, it's, it's actually a great question. And, and, uh, um, and first of all, thank you uh, for, for organizing these events. And yes, I, I, I see Danny back there. <laughs> um, uh, so the, uh, the thing that, that, um, that has been really interesting for me is, is sort of this... For, for me, the, the, the concept of open infrastructure in some ways uh, started with the OpenStack days that we were doing. Because the OpenStack days are, are, are some of the, the events where I realized, you know what, our existing global community is already a lot bigger and, and concerned with a lot more technology than just the OpenStack projects. And, uh, and, and we saw that at you know, all, of, all of the OpenStack uh, day events that we would go to. Because you'd go there and there'd be presentations on OpenStack for sure, but there'd be a workshop on Ceph. There'd be presentations from uh, you know, in Tokyo, Yahoo Japan talked about Cloud Foundry and OpenStack running together. And, and you go around the world and you see all of this. And, uh, and, and, and then we started talking with users and we, and, and like um, you know, uh, Thierry was saying, it's kind of like, you don't want these things to, to, to be in a box and be organized solely around one, um, one technology because then you lose, you lose that sense of collaboration. Um, so the open, uh, the open Infra Day uh, uh, program that, that, uh, that I think we'll, we'll be moving towards over the next few years is, 
to me, it's, it's actually a, a great opportunity to recognize um, kind of the, the path that, that those community events have already been on around the world. And, uh, and um, is, is Jacek in this room from SKT? Okay, no. Um, so so Jacek Ahn, who works at SKT, uh, is involved in, uh, in organizing the, the Open uh, Infra Day in Seoul in South Korea. Um, and they did an Open Infra Day this year. They wanted to pilot it and, and try it out. And, and we supported them in that. And, um, and what they did is they went, they actually went and for several months, you know, went around to, uh, to a, a cloud native user group that was there. They went to a Ceph user group. They went to an Ansible user group. They went to um, a bunch of these other community groups and said, this is what we're, what we're looking to do. Um, we've got users and operators who are, who are involved. And we'd love you know, for, for your community to participate so that we can talk about all of these things together. And, uh, and, and they, you know, they kind of like put in that, that legwork. And when the, the time came around for their event, they ended up having um, the, basically like the most successful event that they've ever had there. And they had great representation. And, uh, and I was able to go and, and um, really enjoyed it because it was exactly kind of like seeing it in, in action, you know, the, the thing that, that we, that we want to see, which is this collaboration integration across these projects. So I would say, you know, that, that was a, a, a good pattern that we, uh, that we want to um, get the, uh, the South Korea group to, to share and um, with, with the other organizers, because uh, I think that it was very effective and it was also very successful for them from an event perspective. You know, they, they sold out their sponsorships, they sold out their tickets, they had great speakers, and, and, uh, and, and so they, you know, they also had a lot of fun uh, putting it on. Although Ian Che was, uh, he was very busy. <laughs> he was kind of the, the main organizer and, um, and, and he, was, uh, he, was, he was like, it, he was like, it turned out to be so much bigger and you know, it was a lot of work, but he was very happy with it. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's really heartening to hear because that pattern that you did to describe is pretty much exactly what we've been yeah. seeing. We just weren't really too sure about how far to stretch it. So. Yeah, I think, I think stretch. <laughs> you look like you have long arms, so yeah, yeah, yeah. stretch far. It, yeah, and it really depends on the market because when we've gone around to these different events, it just seems like different, and when I say market, I mean like geography or just at different kind of stages or different things kind of resonate and it depends on the people. So we put a lot of trust in local organizers like you to help kind of make some of those judgment calls. But um, I don't know if you were at the meeting yesterday that they had um, for user groups and- oh. Danny Walls, I'm Okay, because I, I know that they talked yeah. a lot about that there. And his questions that we're trying to like figure out too is like, what's the right balance? Yeah. How do we do this? And so we're just all kind of sharing that feedback and trying to feel our way along together. Um, so there's not like a, a clear. Yes. And as you as you go through the, the process, we would love to hear, you know, kind of what what your experience is and yep. what what's working or, or is, you know, is like challenging or whatever, because that's a, a yeah, I think I think that's extremely helpful for us and for the rest of the organizers as well. Cool. Okay, we'll feed that back for sure. Yeah. Thank you. That was a really yeah. good question. Yeah. I guess behind that question was also the, the question of the scope of open infrastructure, what's in scope, what's out, out of scope. And I think you have OpenStack, you have all of the dependencies. Obviously, we build on top of Ansible and Ceph and, 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 and yeah, Kubernetes man. for to deploy <laughs> OpenStack itself as well. So all, all that layer is obviously on scope, um, but also the layer above it is, is in scope. Like, how, what do you use to deploy applications on top of those things, so the cloud native frameworks that built on top of open infrastructure, to me, uh, is, is that layer of connection between what's purely open infrastructure and what builds on top of, of open infrastructure. Uh, question. Uh, I have read that uh, in geotrans transformation, it does not work uh, from bottom up, but uh, it works top down. Okay, so I uh, understand, I guess, that OpenStack is a tool to implement open uh, digital transformation. Then my question is, do you have a strategy to address LLC managers? Because uh, from uh, bottom up, uh, in my case, I have failed. So um, the question is, is uh, what, what can we do to better uh, kind of educate and convince uh, like management level that, that this is uh, an important uh, like digital transformation and, and OpenStack as part of that is, is, uh, is a good choice? Is that, okay. Um, yeah, so I think that, 
you know, that's, uh, that kind of gets into some of the, um, a couple of times we've mentioned research that we did this year. And, uh, and, and part of what, what we wanted to do with that research uh, was to, to gather information about like what, what the general population of IT decision makers thought about OpenStack and open source and, and you know, the concepts of open infrastructure that we had. And, and a big reason of why we wanted to do that is we wanted to understand you know, what, what the perceptions were and what, um, like what approaches we should be taking to educate uh, uh, you know, C-levels and managers around that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, th that's research that we did uh, w this summer and, and kind of early fall. And coming out of that, we've, we've actually learned, I think, some pretty valuable things that have influenced um, some, of the, uh, some of the content here, some of the, the, the marketing that we did around the summit here. And we're going to carry that forward over the, the, the next couple of years. Um, and, and I think if you look at some of what we talked about in the keynote yesterday, um, you know, that, like today was, was, like Mark said, it was, it was all about the contributors and it was very much oriented around that. Yesterday was, was more focused on, on businesses and talking about business value. And the research gave us, I think, some, some clues as to the kinds of things that, that we need to be highlighting as the, the benefits of OpenStack and open infrastructure. And I think that, that you know, it, this is, it's an interesting thing for open source communities because they start from, um, from, from a, with a very strong developer focus and you have an early adopter focus and you have, you know, in some cases those early adopters are, are bottoms up kind of uh, uh, adoption stories. But the, uh, I think that as we've gotten to the phase that we're at now, um, we have really great use cases from, uh, from non-tech companies like, like Ehrlichen, for instance, and SBAB. And we have leaders, uh, like we had you know, the CEO of Ehrlichen uh, yesterday who spoke, and we had the CIO of SBAB, you know, the bank in, in Sweden, who spoke. And, and that's kind of some, of some of what we're starting to do is getting that level of leadership speaking and, and sharing how they are succeeding and what they're finding value at and then using what we've learned from the research around the, the real value of, of, uh, of OpenStack and open source to enable faster innovation and more flexibility and control in the business and to try to drive those messages. I think you know, we've done a little bit of that, but I would say that, that yeah, mo we've been much more focused in the developer space and kind of the, the bottoms up approach. And so we have, definitely have room for, uh, for improvement and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna be trying to improve that. And you can give us your feedback as we go along, for sure. Tell us if you think it's helping or not, or if it's making it worse. <laughs> what else? Other questions? Do I need to start calling on people? Oh, look, we got Steph. There we go, Steph. Um, so I've, I've heard um, a couple of people asking me, and I don't know why, I, I don't have an answer, so I bring it back at you. Uh, what do you think um, are the, what would be the, for the established user groups who have um, um, you know, made a history and contributing to OpenStack and build their own following with OpenStack, now with uh, the shift to open infrastructure, they face also established user groups with Docker focus or uh, Kubernetes focus, how can they, how do you think they can bring in or reach out to these other communities to reestablish their rhythm? One of, it's, it's actually a really, a really good question that we have, we've discussed um, some internally, which is uh, when you get to that kind of, uh, that, that, that real local grassroots type of an organization, um, what do they care about? And, uh, and I think that, that in a lot of cases, they do, they, they do tend to gravitate more towards, um, towards specific technologies. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I, I don't think that, uh, that an OpenStack user group that is, you know, that's like doing well and, 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 uh, and you know, like has, a, has kind of like a, a, a good level of activity and engagement and everything, um, should necessarily say like, oh, well, I have to change that now and be an open infrastructure user group because that, that's that's definitely not. Uh, I don't I don't think what uh, what we're saying. 
Um, you know, it, it, what I will say is that when I look at some of the OpenStack user groups, some of them have, have already kind of naturally expanded into more things. And we have Lisa Marie who's sitting down here that has run one of the, uh, one of the, the uh, largest and longest running um, user groups in the community and, and they do OpenStack and cloud native and now. And, you know, and, and so, so I think that, that again, it's, you really have to look at, uh, at the, the makeup of the group itself and, and make a decision about um, you know, what's, what's going to be most effective for that. Does it make sense to start to pull in some other technologies? Does it make sense to do joint events with some other user groups like an open infra day? Or um, does it make sense to just kind of expand the full time, uh, you know, like uh, scope of, of of your group. I don't I don't know that that there's that there's one single um, answer that'll be right. And since we're just at the beginning of this, we I I, I don't know you know I don't have like a proven <laughs> uh, strategy for it. And one more question. <clears throat> The open, uh, open Infrastructure OpenStack Foundation and Cloud Native Foundation, what is the relationship or what is the outlook? How do you see it? And for example, some of the challenges, you know, OpenStack Summit now conflicts with the Ubicon and uh, Cloud Native in China. You know, it's happening all this week. So how do you guys see this working out going forward? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that timing is unfortunate. And, uh, um, you know, it's, there are a lot of events and, and it's hard to, Hard to uh, to prevent um, zero overlap when when um, there are like you know th there's so many events happening across the the technology landscape. Um, in terms of of the like the 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 CNCF, um, I think that that you know what what the way I think about it is ultimately you know we exist to enable uh, technology development. You know that's kind of the purpose of the foundation is to help help software, good software, be produced and and adopted. And uh, and when um, I look at at the uh, the set of CNCF projects, um, you know, kind of the core one is Kubernetes. And there's tons and tons of of of, uh, of just um, opportunities for for collaboration and integration there. And and so that's you know that's what we focus on is how do we how do we look at, at making the technologies better and work better together? Um, and that's something that within, within the, the community overall, uh, I think that we see, we see more and more opportunities uh, along those lines. If you look at, at the most recent version of the user survey for the question that we ask about um, what workloads are running on top of OpenStack, it's like well over Half of them are running Kubernetes now. The people who answered that question, which isn't everyone in the survey, to be clear, but um, it, it, a significant portion of OpenStack clouds out there are running Kubernetes. So you know, we, we owe it to our collective users to to, to sort of work together and solve um, the the technology uh, integration points because there's clearly something of real value when you when you get these these tools working together. So I think like that's you know that that's really the uh, the the approach that we have is we exist to to build software that's useful and together our software is actually even more useful. So how do we uh, how do we make sure it works well together? Yeah, and I just wanted to make a point too. It's kind of relevant to the the user group question and, and some of the OpenStack days as well as like um, our summit and you know especially having the overlap this week. But yes, we we absolutely want to like make our events and everywhere that our community members collaborate more inclusive and I think like changing the name to the Open Infrastructure Summit really just recognizes the direction that it's been going but it's not just about like how many open infrastructure user groups can we get out there or how many people can we get to come to our summit we have to go out into these other communities and make the effort um, so that's something that we've really been focused on this last year whether it's like Thierry saying making the effort at the community level to contribute to Kubernetes to go really engage with their community members. Um, when KubeCon was in Austin last year, um, Thierry and quite a other few other people from the OpenStack community, he actually like arranged this um, meetings with some of the Kubernetes uh, community leaders to just talk about things at kind of a higher level of community management and organization and really helped build some strong relationships there. So it's not like just at like the foundation executive layer or, and it's not just about like 
let's get, you know, let's try to have everyone come to the open infrastructure event. We have to go out into all these different places and we have to put in the effort to go into other people's communities and, and work well there too. So. Yeah, Kubernetes is one of the very few projects that is openly uh, developed outside of OpenStack. And, and I feel like we had a lot of sh experience to share there, the, how, they, how they did it, how we did it, tried to trade experiences, and that was a really interesting uh, uh, thing to go to. And the discussions we had there, like, they were, uh, they were extremely happy on both sides. We were extremely happy on both sides to, to have them because there is just no forum for having those discussions. So we have been having those discussions uh, in first at the OpenStack Summit in, in Boston and then at KubeCon in uh, Austin, or, yeah, yeah. I can't, <laughs> too much trouble. Um, <laughs> but we did that at two OpenStack Summits, two KubeCons, and that was extremely useful for comparing notes and, and how we learned a lot about how they did things, they learned a lot about how we did things, and I think the two communities got stronger uh, by exchanging that kind of information, so it's great. Yeah, I don't know if we've mentioned specifically here that the the gate testing that's now in place, where um, it, at, right now, um, when new versions of Kubernetes are tested, they do not ship unless um, it works on OpenStack, and that's a you know joint development effort between the Kubernetes community and the OpenStack community. Chris Hodge is, I believe, here somewhere. It does a lot of that has done a lot of great leadership work in getting that together. So similar to the way that new versions of Kubernetes won't ship unless it runs on Amazon or Google Cloud or Azure, OpenStack's right in that list as well. And it's not just a list, it's a set of specific tests that validate that they work together. So making so that's just kind of a proof point, I think, that um, above all the, the, you know, tweets and whatever else that people get frothy about around uh, different different projects and want to think of them as different uh, different uh, competitors or whatever. There's real work going on to just make them work together, and that's what users actually want. Just make the stuff work, don't fight, <laughs> and and then we'll all we'll all be happy. So that's that's the direction it's heading, which is which is awesome. And I think we may be out of time. I'm not sure. One minute. Is there somebody who has who has a short question? <laughs> nope. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any last questions? All right. Are you all having a good time with OpenStack? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, everyone, for, uh, for coming to the summit and coming to the session. We'll see you around. Thank you.